guys, GuyGamer34 here. So I'm back with a video, and since I'm learning more and more stuff in college, I figured I'd share what I'm learning with you guys. So here is one of my digital system design labs, and I'm going to walk you guys through what it is, um, what I was supposed to do, which I did today already in VHDL, I'll show you guys. And then also... I will show you a Minecraft implementation of the same thing so you can kind of see what it's actually doing. The Minecraft implementation will be slightly different but pretty much the same thing. Uh, I've already built everything before recording this so I can say that with confidence. So let's go through this lab. So it says, this laboratory exercise will help you build upon your knowledge of state systems by de designing a state machine, deriving the next state and output equations for the state machine, describing the state machine in VHDL, implementing and testing the circuit on a PLD, yeah, uh, an FPGA basically. In this laboratory exercise, you will design a merely machine, a, sequ a sequential logic circuit that will detect a 7-bit pattern in a bit stream. So, <coughs> how do we do that? Prelab, there's nothing there, design. We have not covered Mealy Machines in class. Well, we have in class, but not in my channel. But I will basically skip over those for the majority of that, because it's still pretty easy to implement this without going over that. So it says, design a Mealy Machine that will detect the 7-bit pattern in a stream of bits and output a 1 whenever the pattern is detected. The specific pattern that you should detect is your own birthday pattern. Your birthday pattern representation XY is defined as X being a 4-bit representation of the month your birth, and Y is the last three significant bits of the day you were born. So for example, X, if you were born March 18th, your X is 3 for March, which corresponds to 0011, and then Y is 18, which is 18, is 10010. You take the last three bits, so you take the 2, and you put the 2 on the end of the 4, or on, t on the end of the 3 up here, and you get 0011010. Take this 2, put it on the end of here, you get that. And so I used September 16th. Um, so that would be one zero zero one and then zero zero zero. So the state machine is actually pretty easy for this because um, there's only like one pattern you have to be careful of, and that's of the reflection of itself with a one being here, which then you'd have to go to state four, which is the state, which is the zero. I don't know. Um, so, well, I do know, but it's hard to explain. Um, so then, it says procedure input output requirements. You will push buttons on the base on the FPGA to emulate clock pulses. The binary sequence input comes from one of the slide switches. Depending on your code, you may need to add a reset to the circuit to initialize the startup. A single LED should be lit when the password is signif entered successfully. You may wish to use other LEDs to display each state for testing, which I did do. Then they wants you to implement it to the, the FPGA, test and debug it, and show that it works, and you know, write the lab. Um, so now I'll show you it in FPGA, and then I'll show you it in Minecraft. Okay, so here we are in the Vado Suite software that works with uh, Zilnix FPGAs. So the source code for the VHDL is right here. So I'll explain it line by line. So right here we define our inputs and outputs. So our X in is going to come from a single switch and basically what's going to happen is when we turn a switch on and press the clock, that's sending a 1 into the memory cell. Then if we change the state of the switch and enter the clock again, that's sending that new memory into the memory cell. And based on that it's going to know uh, the string that we've entered it and that when we're done entering a string and be able to determine what our string is if it's equal to or if it has that substring inside of it <coughs> so we can define our inputs as x for our in f for our out to determine 
whether our output is true, which w it'll only be true if it, the, the strings match. So this is only true for one of the states, and that's for when they match. Then the reset, uh, you want to be able to reset all the memory cells. The clock, you want to be able to update. This just outputs immediately whatever you input just for testing and debugging purposes. So if you enter one without even pressing the clock, it'll come to a LED to see that your input works to test if it's, your board's working properly. Then you have A out, B out, and C out. So basically you have seven state or six states, so you want to be able to see if you transition between the states when you press the clock. So when you're in state zero, it's gonna output zero or it's gonna output nothing on the three LEDs. When you and when you go to your first state, it's gonna output a one on the LED, which is the C out. And when you go to state two it'll it'll go to B out. When you go to state three it'll be B out and C out, so on and so forth. And then it'll show you what state you're in, so you can check to see if your output is matching what you should be based on what you gave it as inputs. And then you have your enable to make sure the machine works. So on the board, you'd have another switch that you'd turn on, just so that when it'll only work when that enable switch is on. So you turn it off, and no, it'll no longer work. So basically, this defines the ty the architecture. And then you have a few states. You have state 0 through state 6, and I'll explain those in a little later. <coughs> then you have a signal def defined, and that's going to be your current state and your next state, and their, their states. Then you have a signal that's temp called temp, and it's of type STD logic. And then you have your begin statement and your process sta statement. And your process statement basically is used for updating the system and so you have a reset or a clock that'll really be needed to reset or update the system and so that's needed there <clears throat> and then you have your begin process or begin inside your process so this begin encompasses all of this but this but this process en encompasses just this begin to here and in and then this is a bigger begin that goes all the way down <clears throat> so the inner begin says if reset is equal to 1 then the current state whatever state you're in if you press the reset button go to state 0 it's reset to state 0 that's what that says else if there's a clock event and the clock is equal to 1 so if there's a if there's an edge and the clock is equal to 1 so if you have a rising edge is what it's saying if you have if it says clock event and the clock is equal to 0 then you have a falling edge so if you have clock event and clock is equal to 1 and enable is also on then send to the output whatever t it, the value is in temp the temp register which f is defined up here to be our output so we're good with that all right and then our current state is going to go get the next state so basically if you have you're in 6 you want to go to 7 so that's what that means or if you're if in the, if you're in 6 you, you want to go to 0 actually in this case but if let's say you're in in uh, state 3 you'd want to go to state 4 if you're in state 4 you want to go to state 5 so that's why that current state is getting the next state so then you end the, that you end that process which closes this process statement this process starts a new begin statement and this says x out just gets x so this variable gets this input so remember x was just a switch so if x is 1 x out just becomes 1 and that's how that works. So it'll automatically update. And then it says, these are your case statements. And you have, your, this is basically your states. So when the current state is, so you're defining what the current state is. And that current state is right here. So you're defining that the current state is when state 0, and, and then you have one state 1, then you have one state 2. So it's like a bunch of if-else statements. So when state 0, temp gets zero if x is e if x equals one then next state goes to state these values these zero and ones come from when doing the state diagram which i won't include because i don't want to tell you guys how state diagrams work if you guys don't know how they work and can't derive this on your own because it's pretty easy to derive uh ask for a video on it in the comments i guess and now uh, you can do a video on state machines they're actually pretty fun 
anyway, and then I want to send to the output zero 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 for these because I want it to I want to know on the LEDs that I'm in state zero. Then state one. I'm sending this to the output temp because remember temp goes to the F, and then F goes to our output. Well, I'm doing I'm sending zero, and then saying if X is zero, then go to the next state else go back to zero right because I'm searching for a certain bit pattern so I'm saying if it's there then go to the next state but if it's not what we want then you have to go back to the beginning and start searching over again and then it tells us what state we're in then on state 2 it does the same thing and then it says if zero go to the next state if not so if it's a 1 go back to state 0 because we want a 0 we don't want a 1 and then tell us we're in state 2 and that's how this thing works all the way up to the end and so now I'll show you the Minecraft representation of this. So here's the Minecraft representation of this. And you can see it's small. So I didn't do 7 bits. I was just doing this for demonstration purposes. But anyway, here's our output that'll turn on when something's true. Here's what we can compare to. And here's something and here's where we put our input and here's the clock. So this is how this works. And here's reset. So I have a RS NOR here, um, and then some serialized logic here, and then a compare unit right here. And so this is how this would be implemented in Minecraft. So let's say I have the number 9 as my string, and let's say I have, and let's say I have the number 6. That Let's say I'm searching for the number six, or the, this, or I'm searching for. This might help. I'm searching for that bit pattern, but I right now have this bit pattern. All right. So what happens when I clock it? You'll see that this is off. But what happens if I now start searching for a different? What if I search for this bit pattern and I clock it? Now this is on. Um, you can also now that's off because that updates live time. See, so basically, what this works is so you give it an input and it comes through as an AND gate here, and this clock generates a two-tick pulse. Um, actually a three tick pulse because this torch is off for one second well this has four ticks so you do four and minus one it gets you three ticks pulse if you watch it, it's really quick but so basically what happens is this torch turns off in, it, it, right away in one tick and then four ticks later this comes back on so that's how you get three ticks out of it and then you invert it here just so easy to work with then basically when your clock comes through and you trigger it you want it to hit this one allow it to come through then three ticks later because that's how you have on your clock is delay hit this one to come through then three ticks later hit this one come through then three ticks later hit this one come through and send them to the output here so it does that but also when it hits the clock you know that you're gonna need 3, 6, 9, 12 ticks of delay to, to hold these gates open. You need to hold these gates open for 12 ticks to allow all that data to come through and then you need to clamp it closed. So you need to have this on the right timing, this circuit, which is an RSNOR. You have one input going into here, the other output going back in, feeding into this loop, and then you have this reset circuit so that it says, if you see when this comes true, it resets and turns it back off. I'll demonstrate that again. I'll demonstrate that again. One more time just so you can see how it works. So watch what happens if I don't have that. See? It's an iris snore. It's an auto reset that you can set on a timer to control the delay. So I have it set open for the right amount of delay so the last so the bit gets to here, the first bit gets to here and closes, which means the last bit was also in here and it's in the right distance apart because everything's timed correctly. 
So that's how that works. If you guys are interested in anything else, please leave a comment, leave a like, just let me know, and please subscribe. Thanks.